If you like what you see in this video, well, you're not the only one. Many students who've studied with Universal CP Review have found a ton of success. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself by taking a look at our reviews on Trustpilot. Trustpilot is the most legitimate third-party review site that ensures that our reviews are completely valid. Universal CP Review is not only the best CPA exam study option for visual learners, but it's also the most cost-effective option out there. So if you've already spent thousands of dollars on other CPA review courses, we totally understand and we want to help you out. So take a look at our free seven day trial to see if Universal CPA Review is a good fit for you. You can check out our free trial by going to www.universalcpareview.com or simply by clicking on the link in the description of this video. So if we have a deferred tax asset, instead of simply allocating it, we're going to think of this DTA as a tax benefit. Right, so if we are recognizing more tax today, that would mean that we have a benefit in the future. So at first glance, they're going to be like, what do you mean I owe you more tax? And then they're going to think, well, look on the bright side, at least we owe less in the future. So that deferred tax asset will represent the income tax benefit on the balance sheet. And when that benefit is ultimately used, it is then that we will recognize the expense. Okay, so we have an income tax expense that is getting recorded for the current portion, which is going to be associated with the income tax payable. And then we also have this deferred tax asset. Okay, but this is going to be associated with an income tax benefit. This is the deferred portion. Now, DTAs, deferred tax assets, are going to be a little bit different. Okay, and ultimately what this comes down to is understanding whether all of this deferred tax asset is expected to be used. Right, remember, we have a lower current income tax expense today. And that means that we have this deferred tax asset that we can use in the future. Right, great example, prepaid expenses. This is going to lower our taxable income amount today in the future, but will be recorded when incurred on the financial statements. Okay, so taking an expense today, which will lead to an asset in future periods. Okay, and the general assumption is that the tax benefit will ultimately be enjoyed in future periods. But there is a situation where this deferred tax asset is not going to get used in the future, right? If for whatever reason the company doesn't expect to make money in the future, well, then there's no income to be taxed, which means that this deferred tax asset is not getting used. Okay, so in this case, we have what's referred to as a valuation allowance account. And this is the equivalent to your allowance for doubtful accounts. If we think back on our trade receivables lecture, right? We have those allowance for doubtful accounts, which we explained represents the portion of the receivable that we do not believe we will collect. So think of the valuation allowance as the portion of the income that we do not think we will make in the future to be taxed. Okay. So same concept as allowance for doubtful accounts. So how are they going to make the determination as to whether or not they're going to make money in the future? Nobody predicts the future. Well, they're going to use what's referred to as this more likely than not standard. And basically they're just saying that we think more likely than not, we're not going to generate any profits in the future. Okay. But we're not going to worry about determining this threshold too much on the CPA exam, All right? But just wanted to give you an idea of how this works in the real world. All right. So let's talk about how we record this stuff. So let's say, for example, this company has an operating loss that results in a temporary difference of $10 million. All right. But the question is, is this really temporary? Will the company record profits in the future? Okay. So we have a $10 million temporary difference. Great. So we have a deferred tax asset of $3.5 million, right? And the reason is because we have this $10 million discrepancy for this net operating loss, and we have a 35% tax rate. Okay. So there are two situations here. Tax law says that you can carry this forward, right? What tax is this reg or far? This is far, but this is the part of tax law that you should be familiar with on the FAR exam. Okay. So the rule is that net operating losses that occurred in 2018, 2019, and 2020 can be carried back five years and carried forward indefinitely. Now, if the loss occurred in 2021 or later, then the NOL deduction is 80% of taxable income before any NOL deductions. Okay, so can't be carried back, can only be carried forward up to 80% of taxable income. Okay, so situation one is we see no reason why this income isn't going to be recovered in future years. So therefore, we will be able to eventually reverse out these losses. 
in which case we do foresee this DTA getting reversed. All right, so we're simply just going to record the deferred tax asset of the $3.5 million, and we're going to credit the income tax expense for $3.5 million. All right, so we have this income tax benefit on the income statement, and we have this deferred tax asset on the balance sheet. Okay, so there was no valuation allowance here. And as we previously mentioned, what is the point of the valuation allowance? Like we said, this is just like your allowance for doubtful accounts. It's the portion that we predict we will not be able to recover. Okay, but now let's say that internally the CEO says, hey, I actually don't think we're ever going to make any money on this going forward. We keep losing money year after year. This thing is toast. So what's the damage? How much of this do we not think we're going to be able to recover? So now we need to set up an allowance account journal entry. Okay, so because we have no current income tax expense, we're only going to record this deferred tax valuation allowance here. Okay, so let's say that the CEO was wrong, and they did start making money again in the future. So they did start offsetting this loss with income. Well, then guess what? They can then reduce this valuation account balance by reversing out this journal entry. Okay, so the exam may word this as the company ended up exceeding expectations or exceeding estimations, so be on the lookout for that. In which case, this valuation account is what's getting reversed. Okay, so be mindful of what this valuation account really means. This is the amount that we predict that we will never be able to collect.